Good morning. Hopefully we're now back in. Well, I would have thought, yeah. So I think we're up and running okay. So good morning. Hang on. Here with us in church, watching, Hello. we hope, yep. or watching at your convenience on YouTube, you're very welcome to join us here this morning and we'd love to see you at All Saints West Yule. Now it seems only right this morning to start our service by thanking you for the last service of Prince Philip and ask you to comfort and support the Queen and all the royal family. Like many of you, I haven't watched all of it because there's been a lot, but I have watched quite a lot of the tributes being shown on television. And I've learned quite a lot about his long life and his somewhat rocky start, which he's overcome. And I've learned a lot about his service and commitment to people of all ages, to the environment, to his family, and especially to his adopted country. Now, whenever I watch tributes to anyone, my prayer is always that we learn to value each other in life as well as in death. So in a moment's silence, can we remember the, a life well lived and pray for the royal family as they mourn a husband, father, grandfather, and a great grandfather. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now I have to introduce the first song, which is Here For You. And after that, my beautiful assistant, Nigel, will be taking over and doing the talk and leading us through most of the service. I do have a few notices before we, or before we don't sing. First of all, can you make sure you're on mute? We have all our usual cafes. There is no games night this week, but all the cafes and prayer meetings are online as usual. We have no PCC on Monday, because not lots happening. We will be here next week as usual, so please book early. And after today's service as usual, there will be the coffee breakout room. So make your coffee and join in as and when. And there's one new rule that's come in as of today, as you've noticed, we've entered through the church door. So I would now like you to exit, when told, through the gift shop, which is to my left, your right. And I hope you enjoy our service this morning. And please, not too much loitering on the meadow, although looking at the numbers here, I'm sure you'll all behave impeccably. Thank you. i uh -huh. 
Together we say the confession and absolution from the sheets. Together we say, Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse mm -hmm. us from our sins. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let everything be said and done in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God through Jesus Christ. Sing psalms, hymns, and sacred songs. Sing to God with thankful hearts. Open our lips, Lord, and we shall praise your name. And Barbara, can you give us the readings for this morning? Our first reading is from Acts chapter. Well. Sorry? Well. Oh. I'm so used to either having it on all the time or off all the time. Thank you. Is from Acts chapter 4. The believers share their possessions. All believers were one in heart and mind. No one claimed that any of their possession was their own but they shared everything they had. With great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and God's grace was so powerfully at work within them that there was no needy person among them. For from time to time, those who owned land or houses sold them, brought the money from the sales, and put it at the feet of the disciples which was then distributed to anyone who was in need. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading this morning is quite pleased, quite a short psalm. Psalm 133. How good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. It is like precious oil poured on the head, running down on the beard, running down on Aaron's beard, down on the collar of his robe. It is as if the dew of Hermon were falling from Mount Zion. For there the Lord bestows his blessings, even life forevermore. This is the word of the Lord. I feel quite nervous this morning in front of, because I've been used to doing recordings and stuff. It's now nice to actually be in front of a, people. Um, have you ever gone on a proper, I call it a proper road trip, not just like down to the shops, but on a proper road trip? Um, I, a few years ago, oh, it was a long time ago now, I went on a road trip to the south of Spain. Um, and uh, it was my wife, my eldest son and his other half. And it was a we, were, we drove down, it took about three days to drive down, we were there for two weeks, and it took about two or three days to drive back again. It was an absolute blast. But something that uh, reminded me was um, we had to make decisions together. You know, where we stayed, because um, we didn't book anywhere, we had to stay where we ate, what we did, what we saw. Um, and it was really to actually spend that time together, the four of us, in that close proximity for that length of time was a real challenge because um, you had to respect other people's views, opinions, and decisions. And both passages, passages this morning are about unity. You know, Psalm was born from um, when the chosen people came from Egypt and Acts 4 was God's people working together. But what is unity? Now, um, I looked this up in the dictionary and this 
Two definitions says unity is the state of different areas or groups being joined together to form a single country or organization. That was it? But another one which rung true with me says, where there is unity, people are in agreement and act together for a particular purpose. In any organization or group of people or community, it's not enough that we simply just get on with each other. We must be able to you know, communicate, we must work with unity, we must speak plainly with each other. And I was, for a long time, uh, I've spoken um, and talked to people about unity within church because that's one of my passions. And um, years ago, a friend of mine said, have you looked at Acts 15? And I said, what do you mean? He said, well, that's where two apostles are around falling out and separated their ways. Because he was demonstrating that unity is a difficult thing. And in Acts 15, this is where uh, Paul and Barnabas have a, such a disagreement. Um, it says they are such a sharp disagreement that they parted company. And I've struggled with this because I thought these are two great men of God who did the work of the Gospels in the early church, and yet they still had a falling out. And my friend Dave, um, who was a pastor of a church, said, you've got to remember that there are several things that we need to keep in our hearts, one of which is we need to love God. When we have God at the center of our lives, we begin to understand his love for us and our love for him, but also we begin to understand his love for other people. He reminded me, Dave reminded me, that we need to see each other as children of God. So when we start looking at each other, talking to each other, but unfortunately, we start having disagreements with each other and criticizing each other. Are we, in fact, criticizing God's love? There was a guy I was reading up on, William Warren Sweet. He was a Methodist scholar. And it was a few years ago, but from 1931 to 1946, he studied the minutes of meetings of churches. Now, not just Methodist, this is, you know, as many denominations as he could look his hands on. And he studied the minutes of these meetings. And the most common topic that he found was maintaining the standards of behavior in a church. The word you find in the Bible is admonish or admonishment. And basically, it's not putting others down. It's about building people up. It's about strengthening each other. It's about communicating with each other. It's about unity of the church. My dad always said the most difficult thing you could ever do is run a company. He was a director of a company years ago. And sometimes, yes, we do have to take sides in an argument or we have to take sides in opinion, especially in a church because of biblical truths. But in many cases... We don't. In many cases, it's better for us to lead to the wisdom, a matter with the Lord. Philippians 3.15 tells us, resist the temptation to try and figure it all out beforehand. And commit both sides of the disagreement or commit the both sides of the discussion to the Lord. <laughs> and also recognize that, yes, Disagreements will always exist within any group of people, especially the church. Sometimes I, I, I have a too optimistic view of the church. And when church or someone within the church disappoints us, we're tempted to question God's love and the power of the gospel. God wants us to be biblical realists. If two apostles have a falling out, and a disagreement, it shouldn't surprise us then when godly believers in churches or in leadership disagree as well. Rest in God's wisdom to work out such disagreements for good. I'm sure Satan thought he had some mileage out of this apostolic split. But what Satan meant for evil, God meant for good. Romans 8. Think about this. As a result of this split, the missionary endeavor doubled. Paul's original proposal was to revisit the churches he had already planted, but God had other plans. 
he wanted the work to expand into Greece and Macedonia. So let's look for ways in which God might be using disagreements and arguments and divisions among godly people for their good and his and for the glory of his name. And remember, differences don't destroy relationships. Despite the disagreement, Scripture seems to indicate that both parties continue to view one another as faithful brothers and supported each other. Paul continued to refer Barnabas as an apostle of Christ and fellow labourer for the kingdom. The same should be true of us. Don't take everybody who disagrees with you off your Christmas card list. You might think they're wrong, but pray God will bring them to a right understanding, both you and them. But in so much as they're still walking in truth, and ask God to bless them. And don't allow yourself to be stuck in any disagreement. Times I've spoken to people who hold grudges for years. How many times do you see it on the television that parents and children and friends hold, you know, don't speak to each other for months or even years because of a disagreement? Paul later revised his opinion about Mark and was even humble enough to ask Mark for help in 2 Timothy. And can you imagine Mark's joy in his heart when he learned that Paul, who doubted his usefulness, now desired his service. When there is unity, people are in agreement and act together for a particular purpose. It's sometimes not enough that we come together as a church community. We must come together in unity. Um, I spoke to my friend Sarah about unity. And she said, have you ever thought about a football team? Pardon? She said, you've got, what's the purpose of a game of football? to score goals. But can you imagine if everybody on the playing field just wanted to score goals? Everybody, all 11 players, including the keeper, the whole thing was just to score goals. Now, it'd be, this, it'd be a complete farce. They wouldn't win. I remember the Olympic Games many years ago. The Americans put out a basketball team the best basketball team players they had. And they were beaten by another country because that country played as a team. And it's the same with football. When you play as a team, when there is unity, that's when they score goals. And it's the same for us. When we come together in unity, then there is nothing we cannot achieve through God. When we come together in unity, we can make a difference to each other, to the church and in our community. But it's hard. And it's challenging to work together in unity. Families, in the committee, in churches, in a community, in companies. It's hard and it's challenging. It's something that has to be worked at all the time. We need to understand each other. We need to understand each other's situations. We need to be open about each other's situations. So when some of us need support, we're there for each other, for unity. We understand each other. We need to get over this notion of not wishing to burden others with our problems. Because when you are in together in unity, you are blessed. And even now, with us entering the next stage of our church in Directing, we need to support the church wardens. We need to support the PCC. We need to support the decision-making that God will guide them and guide us and guide everyone in picking the right person. I have no idea what the future holds. We were just talking about how the church will look in the coming weeks and months. I trust in God. And as I said this morning, I've got a church family as well that supports each other. When there is unity, people are in agreement and they're together for a particular purpose. To finish off with the words of Psalm 133. 
how good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. For there the Lord bestows his blessing, even life evermore. Amen. And I believe there's a song, Dave. Together we say the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body. You got it on there now? Yeah. Masks and glasses don't go. Right, this morning's prayers have been written for us by Kathy Catamore. There's no thing at all, that's all. We praise and thank you that we can meet inside the church once again. To see people, to be able to connect with each other. Thank you for Easter a time where we remember the sacrifice our Lord made because he loves us so much. Thank you for anything new that we've learned during the end and help us to apply this to our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, as lockdown is eased further, we pray that we would still approach each day with caution but also with joy at being able to do things that we have missed. Help each one of us to be sensible and not undo the work that we've all had to endure during this year, whether it's been homeschooling, working from home, having remote coffee mornings, not visiting family. Thank you for all those involved in, in, in administering the vaccine from people keeping the labs free of contamination, those with the scientific knowledge that has led them to create the vaccine, and to those sticking the needles in our arms. Well done to all who've, called, who've answered the call to get jabbed. We pray for those who are still skeptical about receiving the vaccine, for those wanting to, but unable to for a variety of reasons. Bless them all and reassure them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, as we look towards the future of our church, we pray for the person that you have called to be our next vicar. We ask that you would give them insight. We ask that you would give insight to those doing the interviews that they will know who it is that you've called. For the person you've called, give them peace of mind that All Saints West Jewel is where, they, where you want them to be. And finally, we pray for ourselves that we will respect your decision and work with that person. You've shown us in the past that we can adapt to change, that we can still be a church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We're now going to say together a prayer for vacancy. So if you have your card at home, please join in. God, our Father, you have welcomed each one of us in Jesus and calls, called us to be his body in this place. Send us your Holy Spirit at this time of uncertainty and change to fill us with vision, with energy and faithfulness in prayer, that we may be true to our calling, to bring new life to our community. Give your heavenly wisdom to those who are to choose the new incumbent for this parish, that he or she may be a wise and gentle shepherd of your people, ready to serve us with joy, to build us up in faith, and lead us by example in loving obedience to your son, Jesus. Amen. Now in a moment's quietness, we will offer to the Lord any who we know are struggling in health, whether that's in mind, spirit, or physically.
Lord, we ask you to bring them peace. Lord, in, our, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, we lift up those who have gone before us and we pray for all the families left behind, remembering especially today the royal family. Now we say together our All Saints Church prayer. God of mission, who alone brings growth to your church, send your Holy Spirit to give vision to our planning, wisdom to our actions, joy to our worship, and power to our witness. Help our church, All Saints, to grow in numbers, in spiritual commitment to you, and in service to our local community of West Jewel, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We're now going to say together the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now we've got my favourite hymn, and I'm going to find it very hard not to join in, but we're going to do How Great Thou Art. Burden gladly 
Together we say the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you everyone for joining us here and thank you for joining us online. Um, Dave has just reminded me that those who are joining us online, you will be um, put into breakout rooms to share coffee um, together, obviously, in your own homes. Um, for those of you who are in the church here, can you please remain seated until you are asked to leave um, in accordance with the COVID bits and pieces? Can you exit to your right through the gift shop? That's Barbara's joke, not mine. Um, and please, uh, if you are going to just have a chat, can you maintain social distancing and try and keep the numbers down? Thank you very much for joining us this morning.